With you just having a huge rollout within Courtside Wealth Partners, um, huge congrats to you on appreciate that. Appreciate you, appreciate very, you. Very, very, very proud of you. Appreciate I know you feeling that. good. You popped a bottle or what? Um, I had a, I had a pot, uh, can't even get it out. I had a bottle of Dom. What? Don, yeah, Dom Perioni. Oh. Yeah. You and the lady? I mean, no. Why is that? I was out of Arizona. I was oh, with me and, me, and, me and the homies. Okay. Me, and the, me, and the, me and the lady, we, um, she took me to dinner. We had some champagne. Like that. We toast. like women that have money. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> we went down. <laughs> yeah, we do. Why are you laughing? <laughs> My man in the back, he love, he love. You got you to gotta have a good credit score, ladies. Man, good credit Good credit score if you want to deal with Rel Plush. You know listen, what I'm saying? I'm them. We took it back. Mike, yeah. Standard. And shout out to Rel and Cuddy, man. They've been holding us down in the back. No, Rel and Cuddy, you know them guys. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. Let me chill. Remember, I said that, though. <laughs> You're sick. So I want to know why why the rollout in this specific time for, for your brand? Yeah, man. So it was time, right? Um, I had... There were a lot of reasons why. There was no significant reason. Like, it wasn't like this... The month of September was significant to me or, you know, the space that I work in. It was just... Um, it was just time. Like, I, I, I had already given notice that I was leaving and... You know, I was preparing to launch a firm, mm -hmm. and I had my full support, the full support of my previous manager, um, who I'm forever indebted to. He's a great guy. I learned a lot from him. Um, I told him what my plan was and told him that this had been... See, most people think that Nas just up and became... You don't just up He and just jumped up. out the window. You don't do that. Yeah. This is a strategic Smart process man. that has taken place. Intentional, three, man. Three to four years has taken... And I didn't switch lanes. I'm in the same field. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so, um, it was just the right time to to make them to make the motion happen. Um, and I I had there was clients that were ready to work with me that I didn't want to onboard at my previous employer, and and I wanted to to onboard them within my firm and mm -hmm. and have it be the way I wanted it to be. So. Um, shout out to Courtside Wealth Partners. So if you yeah, are watching, big shout out. Courtside Wealth Partners is a full service financial planning and investment management firm that serve athletes and entrepreneurs alike. Um, you can visit Courtside Wealth Part CourtsideWealth.com, excuse me, uh, to learn more. I'm on every platform, Nasir Smith. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm doing all the plug plugging up. in now, but uh yeah. I'm intentional, man, and I'm gonna tell you one thing. If you're not if you're not a client of Courtside Wealth Partners, you you should be, and um, it's for everything besides the X's and O's. Like what a lot of advisors can't do, that I can do, is care, because what we forgot, like I work in the, we I work in a service, the ser client service industry, obviously dealing with you know individuals, and mm -hmm. so caring is not a strategy of like who I am. It's it's. It's a part of the fabric that that makes you know makes me Nasir Smith, right? The the way I was raised, the way I carry myself, and so there's so many people that are in or serving athletes, you know, as their financial advisor. They don't care. They don't show up for them in the ways that I do for my clients. They don't go to bat for them the way I do for my clients. And so, if someone were to ask me, well, Nasir, what is the difference between you and you know, X firm over there, I'm I'm not going to sit here and tell you how, what the returns were like for the clients that I currently have. I'm not going to tell you all of the X's and O's of, you know, someone's financial picture in order to do that. I'm going to talk about me as a human being, my values, uh, my character, how I've been able to conduct myself. Um, and my name holds weight, bro. Like, believe it or not, there really? are spaces that I'm operating in like and that. I'm highly regarded. I actually mm. got some feedback. Um, that I'm that. gonna read. I like that. I'm gonna read to you, and uh, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna obviously keep the name of the individual out confidential. of confidential. Um, because we don't violate client confidentiality mm -hmm. uh, at Course I Wealth Partners. <laughs> but I want you guys to I want you guys to understand something. So, um, this is what this this I'll I'm gonna read this right. So it says, "So great to speak to you yesterday." Blank. Thank you for getting all of us on the call and connected. Nasir, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Again, just have to compliment you on how you are approaching this business. Even beyond your client, we'd love to support you however we can. It goes a long way for these guys to have someone like you in their corner looking forward to continuing the conversation. And so when I think about that, right, I got on this call and was talking about one of my clients with this, with this particular um, entity. 
And these two women were raving about me as a financial advisor because they work with other advisors, you know, that are, you know, helping their clients sort of achieve some of the similar things. And they couldn't stop raving about me in terms of how I showed up for this particular client and the way I'm thinking about orchestrating their life outside of the game of, of, of the sport that they play, right? And, you know, thinking about the long-term positioning of, of this particular pair. So that that that's a review, and I saved it, and they want to they wanna send me business. That don't happen. It's the first time I met these people. Mm. That don't happen regularly. That is a that that is that is the, the difference between me and your advisor at Morgan Stanley, and no and no shade to Morgan Stanley, but I'm gonna tell you one thing: he can't do what I can do. I and feel that's, that. that's what that's it. What within that situation? What did you do that was unique or different that you believe that they saw was a difference in just the way I how you about it, man? It. Like the, the the type of the, the type of questions that I ask um, as it pertained to this particular deal. Right. Um, the way I um, explain the setup of this individual's um, off the court business structure, right? Allowing myself to elaborate on how we are evaluating opportunities as they come to this particular client, because we're not chasing money. Mm. I just said that a couple minutes ago, right? Money is a by, if you approach in the game, if you're in the, if you're in the sports of, if you are in the business of, excuse me, sports entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. The way you approach it is not by chasing money, but making sure that the opportunities that are in front of you align with you as an individual, your values, your character, right? Is it a brand that you want to put yourself behind and allow money to be the byproduct of that, right? Doing good quality work with good mm. quality people because what's happening in this, this whole NIL climate um, and even in the NBA, right, off the court, so many of us are chasing money as the reason and the means behind why we want this particular deal, but Correct. we're going about it the entire the the, the entire entirely wrong way, wrong entirely mm -hmm. wrong way for that specific reason. So for me, it was it was less. I did not. I was in that meeting, and I never. Of course, I I'm a financial advisor, so I don't want to say I didn't. There, that the money aspect wasn't a part of the conversation, but it did not come up. I never asked a question, and the woman said. So are you want to you ask, didn't ask about, what question? I didn't ask about how much how much are you paying? What is this opportunity paying? Didn't lead with that. Mm. Didn't ask that question. At the why end didn't of, the amount matter? Because I wanted to make sure the opportunity was right for my client. Okay. And if the opportunity wasn't right, it don't matter if they was paying how much it was. Million, yeah, a hundred million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. If the opportunity didn't align with my client, there was never going to be a conversation. Yeah. Now at the end of the conversation. We got into what of conversation course. structure yeah. looked like because obviously that's that's very vitally important um, for my client, and so they they admired that because most advisors are going into that meeting and the first thing you money know off top is money off the top because yeah. that's how they the money they can get from them from them, that situation it trickles down into them it trickles down into them Correct. I'm not worried about that I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be taken care of because I'm doing the right thing but guess what it don't cost nothing to care and I mm. care it's not a strategy of mine. It's not a strategy. I, I don't know. I kind of feel like when you when you hear somebody in, in your space say that, especially within athletes, it's it's tough to believe it's authentic, yeah. right? Because it's like, you're telling me that you care, but I know you're going to get paid, mm -hmm. right? But in the same breath, it's like, I know you're being authentic after the relationship is being built and cultivated, and then they see how you're handling that business. It's like, oh, well, he really does care. You know what I mean? And then through that, the relationship continues to build. And then now it's just like... I lead with the work. I tell all yeah. my prospective athlete clients and my current clients, while we're building a relationship, I want to continue to earn your trust, right? I'm not asking for you to give me 100% of your trust on day one, right? That's impossible. Correct. Yeah. But what I am asking for is the opportunity to show you that I care for you. Because if you succeed... I'm going to succeed as a financial advisor because you're succeeding. Okay. But if your success is predicated on how much money you're about to get from a deal, that's not really, for, for me, that's not really creating success for the client uh -huh. because that might be bad money to earn. And if we're not evaluating it that way, then again, we're not doing what's in our client's best interest. And so for me, it's, it is it is genuine. It is authentic, right? right. Um, and I feel as though that each one of my clients can attest to the fact that they feel... Beyond everything else, they feel like they can relate. I relate to them. 
Mm. They can connect because that's a big thing. A lot of the people yeah. that I serve, they don't got nothing in common. They don't got a lot of things in common with the yeah. advisors out there yeah. because I'm I'm I tell them first meeting. I'm, I'm from right. inner cities of Philadelphia, man. Yeah, so I'm right from there is not from. a scenario I haven't seen. Right, yeah. I, I, I I've seen both sides. Right, um, and getting that experience that you can't buy, you can't buy the experience that you know I lived at twenty first. That's how you grew up. I lived at twenty first Susquehanna, man. I I probably was I'm I was very poor. Let's just say that, mm -hmm. right? And I come from a, an environment that if you knew the environments I came from, sitting here, five-year-old Nasir is smiling like, yo, bro, you, you, are, yeah. you are, you winning, man, because those environments could have took me elsewhere, right? Um, and so my clients feel like I can relate to them, like they can talk to me about things beyond, beyond the sport that they play in. And one of my clients recently shared, he was like, you know what I love about you, Nas? I can talk to you about anything in life and our conversations are less about business and finances every time we talk. Mm -hmm. And that was important for me. That's good. Because if we don't got a relationship about... You Everything know, else don't matter. No, nothing else matters. Yeah. I think that that's really, really important too because it's like... I think it's really important to be able to connect with the person. Yeah. And like you said, all of the business will follow after. Um we want to know, like, is there some clientele that you can tell us about personally that who, who you're dealing with right now? So to not violate confidentiality, <laughs> I can't mention that. Yeah. Um, what I will say is my clients um, play in the teams? realm. They're, 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 they play college basketball. Mm -hmm. um, they play in the WNBA. And they play in the NBA. Those, okay. are, those are my clients right now. I don't have any NFL clients yet. Mm -hmm. I will. Um Another thing I want to mention about what you just said is the parents. Most advisors are jumping. They don't have relationships with the with the athlete, right? Because they're so busy trying to woo the parents or the people that are in position to help make the decision. But ultimately, although you may be the decision maker for this kid, if your kid doesn't feel that connection, that ability, yeah. it don't matter how much you love me because yeah. they're going to say, nah, that I don't really... I'm not feeling or, him like that. I don't rock with him like when that. When they get to make the decision on who... who, who they, when they get to decide actually on them, on the, for themselves yeah. who they want to work with, they kicking me they kicking me to the curb the first chance they get because I was mm -hmm. the hire of Rob, not of the athlete. And so that's the next piece of it. You know, So I'm, I'm organically picking the right clients that are best, that we are best for each other because... Corsai Wealth Partners is a firm that we're close to our clients, but we're partnering together as we put you on this track towards, you know, building financial success in your life. Um, Philly Financial Week is coming up. Yes, sir. Huge salute to you on that. Appreciate you, man. You hosting that here, right? We're live on location at live Rec location. Philly. Shout out to Rec. Shout out to the um, team at Rec. What can the people expect? What's going to be new about this one that you haven't had in the, in the past years? So, um... Hmm, this is something else. This is why I differentiate myself, man. So right here in the city of Philadelphia. So seven years ago to this to this day. You know seven to number of completion, right? I told you that. Mm, you did tell me that. You did tell me that. I'm in the numbers too, so you did tell me that. Yeah. Um, but seven years ago, I, at that point I was year three, year four in mm -hmm. finance, and I kept running home telling my folks like all this information I was learning at work. And and while while going to school, and so eventually, I'd like had a like an aha moment, like yo, I want to if if my family is not privy to this information, it's so many people who look like me who also are not privy to this right. information, and so I called my best friend and I said, yo, this a, this is a, a female, and I said to her, I said, look, I want to teach financial education to underserved communities right here in Philly, mm -hmm. and she loved the idea, and so I remember going to her house, and I got the video on my phone. I was sitting in her living room, uh, her mom's living room at the time, and uh, we recorded the first video to announce what I was doing. And what ended up what ended up as an idea that stemmed at a church that it stemmed from, excuse me, a church that I grew up in in the middle of North Philly, North Philly here um, on the second floor has now birthed into an organization, 501c3 nonprofit, that is geared towards financial education for schools uh -huh. and underserved communities across America. And so... What a lot of other advisors don't do is they don't philanthropically give back without... Because, again, I had been caring way before caring. Way before you was getting... Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that's why I'm saying it's... I'm organic... I organically... Or not organically. I authentically, excuse me, care yeah. about people. 
that, and also the work is aligning now. It's aligning. Yeah. So I've been in that space. So we we received the citation from the U.S. House of Representatives for this. Um, we also um, the first year, the first and the third, the first and the fourth year, we are honored here at Philadelphia City Council. So it's in the books here in Philly, it's right right down the street here at City Hall. Uh -huh. That the third week every year in October is Philly Financial Literacy Week. So. For those of you who are out there listening, watching, Philly Financial Literacy Week is next week. It's on October the 18th. Mm -hmm. It's a one-day symposium. It's going to be here at Rec Philly, 901 Market Street. Um, we're going to have resources um, that are going to be cool. being, you know, being given out. And then we're also going to have financial education workshops uh, free to you, the community member, uh, because we care. And that's how I've been. I've been ro I've been rocking and rolling. So we we've been making huge strides, man. We've we brought in Credit Borough here to help people get the credit scores raised. We've had people get free estate plans and wills. We've, I mean, you, you name it, we've done it. And I was doing that before financial education. Because now financial literacy. Financial literacy is very trendy. It's very trendy. It is. But I got the records to show yeah, that yeah, I've been, I've been, a, I've been, a, I'm a veteran yeah. in that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm not, I don't, I never yeah. did it for like the camera attention yeah. or any of that. I really organically care. And there's so many people that. Authentically, I keep saying organically, but um, there's so many people that have been impacted by by the work that my organization and I've been doing. So, how many people you expect then, roughly? Um, this year we're going to be here in front of the house, so roughly about a hundred people. And it's, it's through the week, or it's one day? So, so forgot that good question. Yeah. So it's a one day symposium, symposium, but the uh, the from the the fifteenth, the sixteenth, and the seventeenth, we are in schools in and around the greater Philadelphia area. We partnered with Vanguard. Who is deploying van, um, Ooh, good volu Vanguard. Volu volunteers? Um, they're, they're deploying volunteers to partner yeah. with us, and we're going out into schools and facilitating financial literacy programming for the students. That's also part of the week. So we again, we've been doing it that way for a while. Um, when we first started, we were we had a daily theme, but we recognize that people obviously have things going on every day, so they weren't able to get out to every um, every event. But uh, yeah, man, October the eighteenth starts at one thirty. Make sure you hear. Um, you can visit Philly Financial. That's financial mm -hmm. spelled with a ph. Um, Good ph. dot org and uh, register for your workshop, or you can check it out. Uh, register for the for the symposium, excuse me, and then you can go to um, Philly um, Eventbrite and look up uh, Philly Financial Literacy Week as well. So, yeah, we're gonna make sure that we put that in the details of the sure. conversation as well too. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, this is gonna look good in your in your book. Ooh, <laughs> the book. Yeah, the book. All right, good talk to me good audio book. I was talking to Rel Plus. He's going to write a book too for us mm. very, very soon. But you got to give us like an audio book. You mm. know what I mean? If you, you've you been in the game for 10 years, we need, what's that, a decade? That is a decade. Calm decade. It'll so. be 11 in, in December, 11 years. Yeah. I was trying to find this video. Um, no, we, we going to make sure the editor get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely going to do that.